Ah, welcome back to Dad's Guide to Thrive. You are with Israel Smith, your host, and this is where we dig into conversations about what it's really like to be a dad, where we're not afraid to peel back the layers of the onion a bit, get a bit vulnerable, get a bit exposed and talk about, you know, what might really be going on, juggling all the various responsibilities of being a parent uh, and, and working and doing all of the other stuff. So today I am joined by a new friend of mine, Josh Klein, who was uh, put in touch with me via a previous guest, Todd Genitasio, from earlier on in the series. And amazingly, um, I was just learning beforehand that Josh and Todd met each other because Josh went ahead and set up a dad's group so that dads were able to connect with other dads when he first sort of started living in a new part of, of, uh, of the New Jersey, New York kind of region. Now, what I'm also able to tell you is that Josh is a leadership and business coach, and he works with corporates and with other small business owners and other people in a coaching and, uh, and leadership kind of role. He teaches people how to give and receive feedback, how to have better quality conversations and just create a stronger, better team culture. I can't wait to dig into this. Uh, also a father of three, I believe, Josh. So look, correct. introduce yourself, tell us a bit about your family and, and you know, what makes you tick? Sure, sure. So yeah, I, um, I, and, and Israel, you're a, um, you do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Right. So I, that's how I started and I still, uh, still do that. It's just been a lot of the more corporate conversations lately and coaching and these conversations certainly make me tick. And, uh, I, you know, I, when I went through my training as a coach, uh, however many years ago, I have no concept of time anymore post pandemic. I have, so <laughs> I have no, it was yesterday. It was ten years ago, or somewhere in between. And there was a mo there was a, a a leader in the group, and she was a mom coach, and she has this like beautiful mom coaching program. And I was like, oh man, like I knew I wanted to be a coach, and I never thought about a niche. And um, regardless of whether I coach them or not, I just love dad conversations. So I was like, I should be a dad coach. And I certainly get dad clients, not even because I market that well, but just because you, whatever you put out into the universe, you get back. So I'm 100%. a dad of three. I'm, you know, uh, late thirties and, and, and I, and I get that, I, I get that back. So, um, so yeah, I, I started a dad group, um, because I love to connect with people and I wanted it to be kind of coachy and let's get super responsible and let's get super vulnerable. And not everybody was into that. So we also just had <laughs> wing, wing nights and going out and get beers and stuff like that. And, but you know, there's, there's no wrong way to do it. it, it I just, uh, uh, I, 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 I love the dad, uh, uh, community, you know, even as, as men, a lot of times, uh, and, and I feel like we were talking about this, we try to do things on our own and we try to be tough and muscle our way through things. And then once you have kids, you, you, you hide away even more and you don't have enough, you have even less time, uh, you know, to, to figure out who you are and what, what's, <laughs> you know, what's going on in life. So, uh, so yeah, I love supporting dads, whether that's through my business or just in life in general and, 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 and talking with dad. So th thanks for having me on here. I don't know what else makes me tick. I'm, I, as a father and a, and a, and a, and a business person, <laughs> do I have time for anything else? I like sports. I like to, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, um, I love comedy. I'm a huge comedy buff. I, before I became a coach, I like, uh, was like a, uh, I was like a, a voiceover actor, and 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 I did improv and stand up comedy in New York City. So comedy really makes me tick. I, 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 I love all sorts of movies and TV shows, but really my favorite, my favorite stuff's comedy. So that's me. I love that. And I have, I have right. children. I have three children under the age of eight: two girls and a boy. My son even came for, on. For which I, I take my hat off to you because three <laughs> under eight is a very compressed time frame for kids. My son came into this, like, came into the room during one of my, my corporate sessions today. And uh, you and I were talking about how companies are becoming more and more progressive. You know, I, if I had this session 
if I was on a Zoom call prior to the pandemic, I mean, we weren't really using Zoom uh, quite quite as much as we are. But I, you know, like someone would have been like, "That's uh, how how terrible is that?" His how unprofessional are you? And, you can't keep your family under wraps, you know. Like. And and that's the good thing about the pandemic. I think it kind of like humanized us a little bit, you know, at least on the corporate level. That like we have to connect, we have to get work done. So whatever happens in this square happens, and and we can all just give each other some level of humanity. So uh, my son runs in. I like picked him up. I showed him to everybody. They're like, ah, oh, he's cute. All right. I was like, all right, get out of here, get out of here, buddy. Uh, but it was um, it was quite a funny moment, and um, I think uh, and I think that's sort of connected to to what we, what you and I were sort of talking about with. Um, humanizing you know men being human right and being Mm. being real right being vulnerable being honest it's like why do i have to hide the kid you know off camera like let's talk about it let's you know let's bring him out um it's it's exactly what my head was sort of picking up on as you were describing that story like just about the fact that one of the things is we've all had no choice but to acknowledge this weirdness that we're in right? we've all we've all been given no option but to deal with the fact that we get all sorts of random interruptions when we're in a professional work environment in inverted commas you know and and now the blurring of those lines i guess it's both right like it's a bit blessing and it's a bit cursed but i think the the blessing side of it is absolutely the fact that we've been able to purely by the fact that a lot of people have been sitting at their dining room table working and there's like life happening in the background behind them we've been able to see ourselves in each other a lot more easily. We're like, oh yeah, I got like laundry hanging over the back of the chair in my background as well. And I got the kids yeah. banging through wearing no clothes after a bath when I'm on a late meeting or whatever. Like it's just, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, oh, well, it yeah. is what it is. It's been obviously, you know, I, I, I do not, I, you know, we, you can't make light of, of, uh, some of the tragedy and the horror that's happened over the last two years. Um, but, you know, there's, I, I think that put people, it just sort of put us in a position to rethink like, Hey, like what's uh, like, well, what's important here? And how do we, how do we connect? You know, how do we, uh, obviously from a technical standpoint, we have to, we have all, you and I are across the world uh, connecting, yeah. you know, connecting right now. But even even through that, how do we, you know, you know, let's you know, lower the stakes a little bit. Let's be, you know, the the screen doesn't have to be perfect. You know, the mm. the family, the the noises, the animals, right? I don't I don't have animals, but I know a lot of people do. A cat will jump in and like attack a person, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, right? And it's just like, yeah, that's my cat and. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, uh, you know dress code. Um, I feel like we were already on that sort of trajectory with not as strict of dress codes and and whatnot, and this just not you know really shattered that. Like yeah, yeah okay, you can wear uh, you know wear what you need. Um, yeah, exactly. So one of the things that from when we first started chatting before we hit the record button that we kind of touched on that I'd love to dig into a little bit more is just understanding um, like the work that you've been doing with corporates and, and that sense of kind of coaching and supporting and training these people to be more human in a lot of respects, to be more able to connect to each other in an open and a slightly more raw way so they can speak their mind, give feedback, receive feedback and understand, I guess, I don't know, I guess where I'm, where I'm going with this is I would love to just hear more about what are some of the big barriers that you see in corporate environments in terms of the connection between people and then how do you see that parallel in the relationship a lot of men have with each other, with their friends, their peer groups as men? Yeah, great question. So let um uh for 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 those of us you know for people watching like great uh giving feedback was is one of the things that uh, I I I work with um 
corporate clients on, and that happened to be <laughs> that happened to be the conversation that my son jumped in in front of the camera on today. Um, so, I think corporate the corporate America and the corporate world there there's a reason why they're having people <laughs> like me come in whereas before they might not have where you might have a consultant come uh to dis- discuss strategy right a consultant talks strategy whereas a coach uh talks culture it's a culture conversation right. so i go into Love a million that. different companies and I uh, I wish a million different companies, but the all the different companies I go to, <laughs> all the different companies I go to, I, I don't know what they do. Today was a pharmaceutical company. I don't know that world, but I do know how to talk about how we can interact in a more conducive and inclusive, connected way, and how do you know and and and, and feedback from a psychological perspective, right? What do studies show that you know people? People, um, uh, you know, in, in a feedback conversation, when someone receives it, what are the things that um, could get in the way? Well, it's identity, uh, it's trust and tr- or truth, really, truth and relationship. So, how do I relate to this person? Am I in a connected relationship with this person? If 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 they're not, then I'm not really going to take their feedback. Uh, is it the truth? Do I think it's valid? Like, do I, do, is this actual, do I really believe it? And then the feedback, um, uh, identity, right? So like, if you give me feedback, hey, Josh, you're not that funny. And I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm so funny. Right? That's part of my identity. I love comedy. Or like, or not even that you're not funny, but like, this wasn't that funny, how could you say that? Of course, it's hilarious. I wrote it. I'm a funny guy. So, like, does it affect, you know, you know, are we saying something that goes against how this person's identity is? So, that's right. That's like the, um, oh, hi, we have another child. I hope I'm not speaking too loud. I will. It's, uh, it's nighttime where I am. Hey, I'm having a conversation. Come show your face. Here, show your face. It's my little, my li- oh, I have to sort of lift her to get her on the screen my little unicorn right here i'm gonna show the unicorn she wears a uh a sleep mask so it's like a unicorn all right oh, beautiful. i'll be up in a little bit okay okay so um i'm sorry i am being loud <laughs> okay <laughs> all right i'll be quieter so um, right, so yeah, so I'm relationship, talking about the, truth, I'm talking and about then the, identity are the kind of the barriers, right? So, and the and and the conversations I have with my with you know these teams of people, I always like make the disclaimer, hey, like we're talking, you know, obviously your company hired me, but this doesn't exist like just in the corporate setting, like. Do you give your wife feedback? Do you give your husband feedback? Are you trying to do it in a way that like they can hear you? You know, Mm. what are, you know, what are the, you know, how how are you approaching them? Uh, How do you want to be approached? Right. I'm not, we're not, I'm not just talking about giving it, but also receiving it. And, you know, these conversations with, you know, I, I have managers who want to talk about how are they, um, you know, how they want to give feedback. And, you know, one of the things I, 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 I guess with, with, with anything that someone's doing, with anything that, that's happening, if you're a leader, if you're a coach, if you're a manager, if you're a whatever, if your parent is modeling it, is modeling it, it's not this do as I say, not as I do mentality, is how do you model it, right? So you want to ask for feedback. Hey, give me feedback. How am I doing? You know, you want to call if if you're the one in charge and you want a connected relationship, then you've got to own it and you've got to cultivate that relationship. Ask people about their families. How are you? What's new? You know, how's everyone coping with the pandemic? You know, have a connected conversation one day and then the next day. 
hey, I've got, you know, I wanted to check in with you about that meeting. Great job over here, but I really think, you know, you could have done this over there. What do you, th what do you think? Right? Make mm -hmm. it conversational. Um, but again, that's me on the corporate level. And then you asked, um, and then you asked, how is it connected to being a dad? So like, yeah, like the, the relationships, I feel like the beautiful thing about that, that framework or those pieces that you talk about there about relationship and then truth and the identity, like a lot of the time, my perception at least is that as men and as dads, so much of the barrier I think is going to be the context of the relationships we have with other dads. Like it's just not done to talk about our feelings. So that doesn't yeah. even exist in that container of relationship there. And on top of that, we have such programming and such kind of preconceived concepts of what our identity is as a man and as a father. And those two things straight off the bat, like whether something is true or not, I mean, I'm pretty sure most people have got a pretty good BS detector by this point in life. You know, we can kind of pick sure. it a mile off. But, but the relationship side of it and the identity side, I can really see those as a great way of articulating those could become massive barriers when it comes to having real open discussions. And it doesn't even need to be a feedback style discussion where it's like, hey, I think you could be doing better over there. Or I think you could, you know, tell me how I'm doing. But it could be just a, can we just talk about some stuff that's going on for me that I don't quite know how to process right now? You know, like creating that opening for that conversation at that level, it's just slightly deeper than, hey, how was the game? And gee, this beer tastes good, you know, like. Yeah. So walk us through where you would go with that. You know, so yeah, for, uh, for, for dads, it's, it's definitely meeting or anybody really, it's meeting people where they're at. And I certainly wanted to create this dad group where we are just going to be vulnerable. It's going to be vulnerable city <laughs> and we're, everyone's <laughs> moving in, everyone's moving to this town. And some people want to have these real conversations and some people don't. And and um, yeah, I love how you said like it's this programming. And and I tell you what, when you become a dad, I think some of us don't even know what our identity is anymore. That's why people have these midlife crisis crises, because all of a sudden you're forty, you're fifty, or whatever. You've got these children, and you are like, wait, I was this person before kids, before mm. this job, this career, like. And then you're trying to like either like go back to that or you're like trying to somehow reinvent yourself or tap into like, who am I? Like, what's my per Like, what is my purpose in life and in this world? And what's the legacy I want to leave? And like, cause you go through the motions, you know, I don't know how it goes in Australia, but in, 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 in this country, people are just, just, going a mile a minute, especially in the Northeast, right? Especially outside of New York City. These hustlers and this capitalist culture and just people are just like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it takes the pandemic, it takes the world to shut down to be like, oh, my, wow, like what are my priorities? And then like a yeah. deeper, and then a deeper introspection or a conversation. Who, who am I? What's my identity? And I think... Being a, I think having children can and it can be a huge part of flipping that <laughs> on it, you know, on its lid, um, and yeah, and dads, you know, who who do they talk to? Who do we talk to when it's when we're trying to to navigate all this? And 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 so many of us are going, you know, I find that. Just in general, so many of us are going through life similarly and have similar experiences. And then there's the specific nuances to being a man or being a dad. And, uh, you know, how to, how to break that barrier is, you know, it's, again, it's meeting people where they're at. I, you know, I can ask whatever questions and I can model it vulnerability and sharing and you know some will some will mimic it back and be like yeah oh my god thanks for saying that i i never really talked to anybody about this but you know my kid does this too 
and I don't really know what to do mm. in this situation. And some dads don't. Some dads are like, oh, that's that's rough. Anywho, football, 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 <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. Like, it's – um, I think the world is sort of swaying into this, you know – um moving in this direction where where we can we can share more we can talk more um there's certainly i i feel like like you and i are having this honest conversation right now and then you're going to mm. record this and then you're going to put it out there and then people are going to see it so like and it's going to for somebody it's not going to click but somebody it's really going to click and you know you're seeing it in social media like what you know someone makes you know someone posts this and it gets like a couple likes something very superficial but then they post something really vulnerable and really honest and then that gets that's that blows up not that i'm an expert on social media i'm certainly not but those vulnerable posts like really, you know, cut to the core of people and then, and, and, mm. uh, and yeah, whatever likes and comments, but like you made a difference for somebody like, you know, you, you, um, you made a ripple. Right. So I feel like, you know, I, I we're moving well, in that I mean, direction and that's it. Those conversations are increasing. Yeah. Yeah. Dad world, corporate well, I mean, world. Sorry. No, you're right. I think the yeah. uh, the, the, <laughs> the lag time delay each other off. Yeah, yeah. The thing that I think I'm really loving about this and what I'm hearing is that kind of that parallel in in a, a corporate environment. If you want people to have a good feedback culture, then as a leader the job is to lead that and to demonstrate what that looks like and sounds like and, you know, to to start those conversations. And I suppose in a way, like, create that environment where those conversations can be had, where they're conducive to good outcomes, you know, like taking the time to set the rules around, okay, look, we want to have these sorts of conversations because science says when we have better feedback loops, then blah, 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 here are the benefits. Here's what the rules of engagement are when we have these feedback loops. We don't get personal. We do stay professional. We try and keep the emotion out of it, but we be really honest and really raw because to be clear about it is really kind. When we're unclear, it's really not helpful. It's not useful feedback, right? But, but the starting point is someone deciding that they want to have this better, more connected relationship in the corporate environment with the team that they're working with and with the people that they're reporting to them and that they're supporting. And that leadership requires a decent chunk of vulnerability in its own right. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm probably going to screw it up, but I'm willing to take the first step because it's worthwhile doing and it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like you said, you know, reading people's bullshit meters, right? If you're trying to like have it all together and you know no it's not it's not uh the word i use is it, it, enrolling like it's not enrolling mm -hmm. for people people aren't on board but if you're right. like hey here's my intention here's what i'm trying to do here's the opportunity i see here's what i see for all of us um you know here here you know here's a, a, a company I worked at and this is how I was treated and I hated that and I don't want that to be here, you know, to give examples of that. You know, I'm not here to, you know, to ask questions. I'm not here to macro, micromanage you, like, but how can I support you? Do you need more autonomy? And you need me to step back? Do you need me to be, you know, do you need me to check in with you more? Like, what, you know, what do you need? I think people, mm -hmm. I, I think, um, you know, people, I don't know if, it, I don't think it's just men. I think sometimes people think they know better and it's really just like, you don't know what another person needs. Ask, you know, mm. what is your, what is this team? What does this team member need? What does this team member need? And it's, and again, it's not mutually exclusive, right? It's relationships. 
I yeah. manage this household, right? I've got my team, you know, a couple, I had a team member who just walked in. What's her job? She has to go to school and that, and be nice to her siblings and respect her parents and eat, <laughs> eat the food I give her and not ask for food that I didn't give her. Um, you know, uh, you know, I'm trying to you know, run a team here that's connected and respectful and healthy and safe. Um, and, um, and that was where I was going with this. Like those, those same things that I was picking up on about the way you work with and educate your, your corporate clients about, you know, what does it look like to have these better quality conversations and to, to create the outcomes It involves that that brave step of okay this is what i'm really trying to create and you know you put away all the pretense and the bullshit and all the rest of it and you're like okay this is where i want us to go but in the same way the leadership and the bravery or the courage that that requires i think it's very similar when it comes to men having unusually deep and meaningful conversations with each other you know like listen I, i'd love to just be able to have a really real conversation with you about something other than, you know, that movie we saw on the weekend or that football game or, or, you know, who has the best Buffalo wings in town or whatever, right? Like let's actually have a decent chat about some shit that I'm really struggling with. And I want us to be able to have this kind of relationship where we can talk about these things. Like I think one of the things that's becoming obvious to me is that the first step in that for the men listening and for the people that are thinking, I really want more of those relationships in my life where I feel really drawn to lean in and I feel really seen the first step is that that courage or that bravery to lead with and to model that kind of behavior and I feel like in my experience personally at least and this this may hold true broader than just my worldview in my life but whenever I've taken that first step to to be a little bit deeper or a little bit more raw or a bit more honest and open. I've never had somebody say, get the hell away from me, you freak. I've always had that, that, that collective sigh of relief. Oh, I can have this chat too. I can put the mask down for a minute. I can actually yeah. connect more deeply with somebody and be a bit more honest. And I think that's a great thing. And so I feel like one of the takeaways for me, at least that I'm drawing straight out of this is that with everything you've said, for the men that want to have more of these sorts of conversations in their lives, maybe the first step needs to start with you. Maybe it needs to be, okay, well, how can I be that leader, create that conversation with one of my network or peer groups, open up that space to say, Hey, let's just have a slightly more real and honest and no bullshit conversation. Let's put the mask away for it. Yeah. I think anything you want in life, that um so one to ask for it but like but it's also a little irresponsible to ask someone for it without doing it so what you're saying of like to model it to be that first so as to get that from someone else i think that's huge um mm -hmm. You know, like for me, I created a dad group, which over however many years evolved into events and a, and a Facebook group. And like, but that's me, right? Like, I'm not saying go start a group if you, maybe, but I think, I think it's for anybody, anything that you're on the fence about getting on stage, let's say it's uncomfortable, but you got to take that leap talking to, um, Talking to someone you're interested in, you got to take that leap to say, mm -hmm. hey, uh, 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 well, you know, I wanted to have a, what, what, how do you, how do you talk to someone anymore? I've been married for 10 years, but how do you initiate a conversation with someone you're interested I in? Remember. I don't even, I don't remember, but, you, <laughs> but I did it. At one point I did it and it somehow organically turned into whatever this is, my family of five, right? Um, but it's taking a leap. And I, I, mm. I really think that um, it, 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 it's, it's, um, it's not expecting someone else to do it. That's for anything in life. That, that, that leadership, ownership, 
res taking responsibility in your own hands uh, to create it. And, 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 what, and, and in this specific case, we're talking about these, these conversations, these manhood conversations where or dadhood conversations like i'm you know this is hard i am struggling i am suffering i don't know who i am anymore i can't juggle it all insert like dad comment here mm. like i mean I everything you just said like they're all very very real things right like how do i juggle the responsibility of being a breadwinner and yeah. doing all the stuff right like I have said and I have heard all of these and more. And yeah, like it's it's just putting it out there and then what do you get back? In my Facebook group, I could do it and then it could open the floodgates where a dad will be like, oh, let me tell you, yeah, man, I, this relates to me. And oh my goodness, right? Mm. And it's it's... There, like you said, there we are out there, and the world is moving in that direction where where we can have these these conversations and normalize these things that we don't have to sweep it all under the rug um, mm -hmm. across the board, and specifically when it comes to dads who will will close up and shut up and and just and just muscle through it um, and and suffer through it. You don't have to. We don't have to do it. We don't have to do it that way, and we don't have to do it alone. Mic drop. <laughs> we could just. We could literally just wrap it there. <laughs> well, you know, that's that was great. Thank you for having us. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I. Not doing things alone. I think is. I think it permeates so many things. I'll. I will talk with corporate clients about we, uh, we're to, well, let's have a change management conversation and here's what the studies show on this and that and the other. I'm like, listen, you're going to work here. You're going to work there. You're going to have these relationships and those relationships. You're going to deal with suffering and tragedy and regardless of uh, all the specifics of your life and the specifics of your life and the specifics of your life, you never have to go through it alone. You never have to go through it alone. So what does that look like? Who is it that you talk to? Is it your wife? Is it a, a professional? Is it a friend? And and what you and I are talking about, it, it's the dad community. That's a community that is an opportunity uh, to get supported by. Um, because sometimes it's, I don't want to talk to a woman, or I don't want to talk to a mom, or I don't want to talk to my wife, or I don't want to talk to a professional. I highly encourage getting professional help but as do i <laughs> but if you don't want to in whatever specific scenario dads are a great resource um mm. uh, uh, for sure because if you want relatability <laughs> and you, if you're a dad and you want relatability who else would you talk to besides us so um yeah i yeah. um that's I, I, that's why that's what got me so you know it's this being who I am being a dad right what what's a part of my identity as a comedian or or whatever um, what's uh, you know lib being liberal or being progressive or being whatever is one of the biggest parts of my identity and I knew it I knew it before I even became one is being a dad you know my dad is my hero. And I always wanted to be a dad. I was like a camp, you know, I loved kids. I was a camp counselor when I was younger. I just, I just mm -hmm. knew this would be whatever I did as a profession does, doesn't matter. Um, I just knew I, I wanted to be a dad. And um, so that's why this is such like, it's why I want to work with dads. It's why I bring it up at every moment I can, why I integrate it into my, my coaching and my corporate conversations um, because it's, it's, you know, that's whatever it is that I do, I'm going to bring who I am to it. And, and being a dad is big old part of that. Yeah. No, I love that. I'm, um, I'm so grateful for this chat because I really feel like there's, 
There's so much that I've learned and have been able to take away from it. And I'm sure that the people listening have been the, uh, the same, you know, to, to honor what it is that's in our real core identity, but also to understand that sometimes what we need is to, to lead with and to model the things that we really want in our life. And, you know, you are a guy that can, has given us a firsthand ex, like insight into you wanted to really be a part of a dad community. So you created one. In the same way, I really wanted to have more of these conversations in my life, so I created this podcast interview series, you know. And and I think both of us have reaped the benefits of that and been able to come closer to other people and have more of these really interesting, curiosity-driven chats with other, other men and other people. But then I think as well, I really loved just learning the, the bits about, you know, relationship, truth, identity as kind of the access points to having these great feedback conversations, but also just great connected conversations. And really, whether it's corporate, whether it's sports team, whether it's personal, family, friends, whatever, really we're just looking for that connection, aren't we, as people? Like we're hardwired for that. Any number of studies and social commentators will talk about the fact that we are hardwired and built to be a connected species. So yeah. how do we do better at that? Look at those three things. Look at what's our identity, what's the truth that we see, what's the relationships that we have, and how can we just kind of use those three things as kind of a lens with which to view the connections we want. I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like... Um, it's almost like... A, So I'm uh, Jewish, <laughs> and um, I oh, there's this, uh, and I you know I, I wish I could I wish I could quote the 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 study that uh, shows these are the three the three things in terms of feedback that you want to make sure of you know the identity, the relationship, and 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 the truth, and really all three of those are relationships. Hmm relationships are relationships with others your identity is your relationship to yourself and truth is the re your relationship to the universe or to god if you're a religious person yeah right and really those are the three relationships of your life it's your relationship to yourself your relationship to the universe and and the cosmos and or, or god or whatever whatever that works for you the process, mm -hmm. right? Trust when people say trust the process, right? What are you trusting in? It's that intangible it's something, that you, something bigger, right? It's yeah, that's that slightly nebulous yes. thing, right? So whatever you want to call that, and and, and then your and the, your identity, your relation. I forgot which one I said. The identity is your relationship to yourself, uh, uh, and then relationship to others. And then um, oh, look at this. And then truth is your relationship to God. And then you have a, a unicorn come back to complaining. I, and you that. I have what my what my older child will sleep through uh, an earthquake. This one, I could just sneeze and she'll she'll uh, pop up. Also, she wants any excuse to not go to bed. Right. Well, I can relate to that. Um. So. Um, but yeah, actually, I, no, I, I can't relate to that. I'm always looking for an excuse to go to bed. So that's. <laughs> I, I feel like I used to be that way, and now I I just wanna to go to sleep. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's just I think it's just relationships, relationships, relationships. I there was like um, I, I was watching a TED talk about um about drug addiction, and uh, have you seen? It, it was about these rats that they um. They did a study of of uh, they had a rat in ice. Oops, sorry, I'm bumping my cord. My cord is caught against my arm. The um they had a, a, a they had a rat in isolation, and they had two kinds of water: one water um, plain, one water laced with heroin. And the rat would drink the heroin water. Are you familiar with this study or the, I am? This yeah, I've talk? heard this. And 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 when. What was it when the rats were isolated, they basically just drugged themselves into oblivion. But when they were part of a community, they went for the straight water rather than the doped water. So they did the, so that they did the second version of that. They made a rat city with 
mm. uh, p- toys and wheels, and and there was a ton of them, and there were men and women, so they could all, um, so they could all uh, interact, <laughs> right? With, so, with, with Lily is in the room, yeah, and uh, and none of them even went to the heroin water. And obviously, yeah. you know, I, you know, I, I'm sure there are addictive properties to it. I'm not going to say, oh, it's not addictive or whatever, but there's something to, you know, to, to isolating yourself and what that, and, and the suffering that that leads to. And, and, and we isolate ourselves as humans, not just men, not just dads, we isolate ourselves mm-hmm. um, for whatever fears or whatever self-worth or w- w- whatever that looks like. And, and um and it goes, and like you said, it goes against our nature that we're connected beings and, and mm-hmm. there's really that opportunity for, and, and you and I see it. And I, I think other dads are starting to see it, um, th- that opportunity to connect and to share, uh, and to be real with each other. Yeah. Well, I think this is a beautiful place to finish the chat, not least because for those of you listening to this, uh, I'm looking at Josh and his daughter sitting on his lap. <laughs> I told her to As come in so I could go to sleep. I said, come get me. I uh-huh. gotta go to sleep. <laughs> it's like it was a secret signal under the table. Um, <laughs> but look, I'm just, I'm so grateful for the chat, Josh. It's been such a delight and a pleasure meeting you and learning from your wisdom on, on relationships and culture and how you work with your clients, but also your own lens and, and how that's impacted your own life. So I'm really grateful for the chat and the time we've been able to spend. Um, I would like to thank you and your daughter and the family <laughs> that are still still awake at whatever time it is on the East Coast over there. This was just, and, per- uh, this was perfect, right? To have the dad <laughs> conversation, the vulnerable conversation, have the kid come in. Oh, Absolutely. you can't even hear this. I'm like, talk- I'm like thinking you're listening. We're both yeah, no, she's on the hearing one side of this. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll, well wrap I, it appreciate, there. I appreciate you having me. This was a great conversation. It was great to meet you. Loved I love seeing that this is happening all over the world, right? That, right. You know, absolutely. It's, it's broadening my my scope. Yeah. Well, you know, we're all connected, right? So the more conversations we can have like this, the more we can help support the people who maybe wouldn't normally take the lead in something like this and give them a bit of a, a safe space to have that conversation and get a little more deep and vulnerable with themselves so anyway we'll leave it at that thank you so much josh klein and i will um i'll be able to put some links in but where can people find you in the world if they're interested in learning more about what you do absolutely so uh, my website is uh, my company's called the catalyst cradle and uh so my website is the catalystcradle.com Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm on Instagram under uh, Culture Catalyst. I think the underscore Culture underscore Catalyst. Um, uh, I also have a personal account. It's just J O K L I N E. So I've got both. They're both connected to each other. J O K L I N E. What awesome. else? Yeah, that's well, really where to find me. I'm not on Twitter. In, yeah, that'll I'm be not good, on Twitter. That'll be a good jumping off point. Is anyone <laughs> on Twitter? <laughs> I think I think a few. <laughs> a couple of million. Um, anyway, thank you again. And to everyone listening, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Dad's Guide to Thrive. We'll be back again with another episode very soon. And in the meantime, check out Josh's work if you want to learn more and remember that whatever it is you are experiencing, you don't have to do it alone. So make sure you reach out to connect to people to get support if you need it. All right. Thanks again, Josh. Take care. Thank you.